Hi, I'm Jared Nelson from the Investing Channel, and welcome to Markets and Minds, the show where we break down big macro themes into simplified trade ideas. Morgan Stanley's chief U.S. equity strategist, Mike Wilson, recently called the top in U.S. small cap stocks by downgrading the sector. These equities outperformed during the pandemic, and Wilson believes that their extraordinary run will soon end, and that investors should be looking to take profits. Morgan Stanley's view is that the good news is already priced into smaller companies, and as the economy reopens fully, it will be these smaller companies that feel the effects of rising costs and supply chain shortages, which have shown up in recent purchasing manager surveys. The bank believes that the recovery from the COVID recession will happen much more quickly than on previous occasions, simply due to the amount of support that the government and Federal Reserve are providing to the economy. This is where the idea of the economy overheating or running hot comes from. The thinking here is that a combination of pent-up consumer demand and ongoing stimulus will push the economy into overdrive, stretching and perhaps breaking supply chains and raising prices as it does so. In the worst-case scenario, smaller companies could find themselves with orders from customers that they have to defer, or maybe not even meet at all. And that could have a knock-on effect on earnings and perhaps the wider economy itself. So, just how well have small-cap stocks done over the last 12 months? We can look at a couple of benchmarks to find the answer to that question. Over the past 52 weeks, ending March 26th, both the S&P 600 and the Russell 2000 vastly outperformed both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. So, is Morgan Stanley right to be cautious on small caps from here on in? Small cap valuations are trading on a forward price-to-earnings ratio of over 49 times, compared to 28 for the Nasdaq and 22 for the S&P 500. That suggests that investors are happy to wait 50 years or more to get their money back, which feels quite unlikely, especially as a third of Russell 2000 companies were loss-making as recently as last summer, and many outperformed the market. That leads to an interesting comparison with high-growth tech companies, many of which go for long periods before turning a profit, and often outperforming the benchmark. There's been a new wave of investors that have entered the stock market over the last 12 months, many of whom are millennials or Gen Z. Younger generations are more interested in generating capital growth from their investments than income, and that mindset helps to explain why the share prices of loss-making stocks have outperformed. Morgan Stanley's great rivals, Goldman Sachs, recently published a research paper on stock market bubbles, which asked, are we in one now? They concluded, not yet. However, out of the nine indicators they used to track the emergence of market bubbles, five were flashing red, while two were on the cusp. One of the indicators that Goldman monitors are the levels of retail trading activity and the number of new entrants into the market, both of which were categorized as high and rising. Goldman concludes that it is these new investors that are driving the prices of loss-making stocks higher by betting on future returns rather than the current performance of the underlying businesses. So, what conclusions can we take away from this? Small cap equities have outperformed most other sectors over the last 12 months, and valuations for the group as a whole are now on the high side. So some kind of correction or reality check may be on the horizon. U.S. equity markets are not yet in a bubble. However, there are several warning signs that one could be developing. New wave equity investors are far more interested in the future of the companies that they invest in than their current performance, but they are not blindly buying everything. Instead, they seem to be focusing on companies that are growing sales, even if they are not yet making a profit. That's all we have time for this week, but as usual, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. To find out more about our TrackStar IQ data, sign up to our free newsletter at investingchannel.com forward slash TrackStar.